in any percent. Hey, so I'm Lego Vegos. Uh, this is Okami, like Sweet Peep said. And I am joined by a cone commentator, uh, Anade. Uh, and I think that's all to say before we get into this run. Uh, it'll be a blast. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. Uh, countdown in three, two, one, go. So to start off, uh, there is a little bit of tech we need to explain. Uh, you'll see it throughout the entire run. So when I get towards cutscenes in this game, I will be jumping into them every time. And afterwards, I'm going to hopefully have something that looks a little weird. So what this is going to be is that uh, our main character here, Amaterasu, she's a wolf, she's pretty cool. Um, she has three speeds. She has a walking speed, a dashing speed, and a gold dash speed. Uh, it doesn't look gold yet, but it will later. Uh, and there's a gold dash speed you only get to after you've gone at dashing speed for about five seconds. And so because of this, um, we want to stay at this fastest speed for as long as possible, obviously. Uh, but to, the problem is, when you go into a cutscene, normally you would lose this gold dash speed, and you would have to just start at dashing speed again. So, by jumping into cutscenes, your dash is actually stored. Um, and if you just moved again at the beginning, you wouldn't have it. But by jumping after coming out of a cutscene, we still get to keep that faster gold dash speed. Uh, the other thing, though, is it might not always look like I'm jumping out of a cutscene. What I'm doing here is I'm jumping and then the first frame that I'm off the ground doing an air tackle uh, which due to some collision shenanigans sort of forces uh, Amaterasu, our wolf here, uh, right back into the ground and it just ends up being the fastest way to get back to that max speed. Uh, the next thing is obviously we have been doing a little bit of stuff already. Uh, I sort of completed a constellation there. Um, constellations in this game are ways of obtaining Amaterasu's powers. So right there we obtained the power of Rejuvenation, which I used to restore the River of the Heavens and swim across it. Uh, rejuvenation as a power is not very useful. We'll only see it a couple more times in this run. Uh, but you know, it's there, it's cool. Um, Amaterasu here is, she's a wolf, but she's also a wolf goddess. That's why she can have all these cool powers. Um, our goal in this game, uh, is to get all her powers back and defeat all the evils in the world, basically. Um, right here we're going to get another power straight away. Uh, this power is going to be Power Slash. Power Slash is very useful. Uh, you'll be seeing it many, many times in this run. Uh, it's required and, most importantly, uh, it will be very useful during battles in this game. Uh, speaking of battles, uh, right here I'm running a little bit to the left and back. And that actually skips a fight. Uh, there's a tutorial fight right there that I just walked right past. And in a moment, I'll do it again too. Uh, there's a couple tutorial fights. This is where you're meant to learn the stuff in the game, but they made the triggers for these fights very small. Uh, so you can just kind of run around them. <laughs> but that's all we're doing in the River of Heavens. This is the tutorial area of the game. And from here, we're going to we, we got our first couple, you know, abilities, and now we're just backtracking so we can continue on. Of course, we always love the, uh, the weird shenanigans of movement tech. <laughs> yes, movement tech being just a little bit strange a lot. Uh, <laughs> not necessarily logical, but, you know, it works. Right here, you're not going to be able to see it, but I just cut down a fruit. And this is sort of the plot of the game. Uh, our goal is to restore areas of the world. In this case, we do it by cutting down a fruit. But uh, normally, we also will do it later by uh, blooming guardian saplings. But that's we're, we're not there quite yet. Uh, so even though we restored this area, this is Kamiki Village. It's a very cool area. Um, however, we, uh, it's, it's not quite right. All the people are still statues, uh, so we need to, uh, we need to fix that somehow. Um, the way to fix it requires us to first talk to three of the statues. Uh, we can't talk, uh, cause we're, we're wolf, 
But we do have a little buddy, Isun, who talks a lot. Um, and he's telling us, like, what on earth are these statues? Uh, this trick is uppy thingy. Uh, but rather than running around, you can just climb up some scaffolding here. And then here, we're going to get the power of Sunrise. So, Sunrise is uh, Amaterasu's signature power, sort of. And this allows us to take on the world. Uh, that was a fight against Greenups. It went rather quickly. Uh, <laughs> the, the, not the power slash is very good. Um, we are also... We have on our back there a sort of disc thing. Um, and that's that's what you're meant to use to primarily attack in this game. But brush powers end up being so much better that uh, we'll only use it when we really have to, or it's just you know we get in a little bit, one last hit in, and that ends up being the fastest thing to do. Uh, right here, I'm digging up some turnips. Um, this is kind of just a little side mini game, but it actually ends up being required to do later down the line. So we're just getting it out of the way. And we're coming up on our first pet, right? We are coming up on our first pet. Uh, so here we give the oddly shaped turnip to Mushi, um, and then we, Mushi disappears for a moment, but then we can finally have our first pet. Oh, it's adorable. Aww. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> there, will be, there will be many more, don't worry. It's not be the last pet. There are many pets throughout the whole run, and you guys donated for it. <laughs> yes, thank you so much. Keep donating. We love, we love that. Okay, so I'm gonna explain there's a boulder skip here. Um, basically to, to get past it a little early, there's a frame after the dialogue where the game considers us grounded. So you do a ground tackle, jump out of it, wall jump. And as you saw, Lego just did it like nothing. <laughs> and <laughs> is right over. <laughs> Yeah, so that basically lets us skip uh, a, a lot more. I mean, we, we finished the tutorial, but we still had a bit of like, you know, the tutorial town area. Uh, but that lets us skip all the other little quests that we're meant to do to get out of the village first. Um, and that lets us just uh, continue on our way. So here we're heading to Hannah Valley. Um, I don't know if you could really see it there, but the area we just ran through is Shinshu Field, and it is cursed. So we can't really do much in it yet. Um, so this is sort of the only area you can go right now. Hannah Valley itself is looking a little gross. The river here is kind of, you know, not, not doing so hot. <laughs> uh, here we're gonna have our first slightly harder fight of the game. These are red imps. Um, and in order to beat them, we can power slash them twice. <laughs> and uh, that'll get rid of their, uh, I don't remember what it's called. There's a name for, uh, oh, I feel i feel like a fake fan right now. It's a its a Japanese <laughs> guitar, but I can't remember what it's called. Um, but yeah, so by power slashing them twice, they basically become just regular imps after that. And so we can defeat them the same way. One little piece of thing here is that I'm actually not going to skip this cutscene, and that's because some cutscenes are so short that skipping them is actually slower because of the long scroll animation that goes across the screen. So sometimes I will fast text through a little bit of dialogue rather than skipping it, uh, and that just saves a few frames here and there. Right here we have another fight. This is, uh, this is our meet with the yellow imp. The yellow imp is very annoying um, to fight normally. And so because of that, we actually picked up a battle item in Kamiki, um, an exorcism slip, which lets us just uh, bypass having to do a fighting it normally. Uh, we'll, we'll have better ways of fighting it later, but for now it would actually lose like about 15 seconds to try to fight it normally. want to point out like that's using the brush power of the sunrise you saw the little sun and that's kind of how the brush powers work yep brush powers are just in a lot of ways they are akin to you know zelda tools and stuff like that they're ways of interacting with the world sometimes they're just fun to play around and sometimes they're required for progression <laughs> i'm 
right here we have a little a little baby sapling. Uh, it's 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 doing okay, but it can probably be doing better. Uh, first though, over here we have Susano beating his worst enemy, Sleepy the Bear. Um, <laughs> Susano was actually someone we were supposed to meet in Kaniki Village, uh, so he escaped around the boulder like we did somehow. Uh, pretty impressive, I gotta say. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, Sleepy the Bear will actually be important later on, so keep your eyes out for that. Um, but for now, we have our first ball pushing game. Balls are really fun to push in this game. Uh, if you've played it, you know that I am not telling the truth. Uh, they have some very, <laughs> they have some very finicky properties. They just kind of do whatever they want. Um, this was a relatively good push even though it could be way better because sometimes the game just does not want to let you let you do what you want to do. But here we can finally complete the main puzzle of Hannah Valley. So by drawing the sun and and it and the sun shines into that ball we just pushed and that actually causes that little sapling to grow into a guardian sapling. And right there we just got the power of Gloom. Gloom is super cool and we'll be using it later. Um, but most importantly by blooming that Guardian Sapling, Hannah Valley is pretty now. Look at it, it's gorgeous. <laughs> um, <laughs> right here I'm actually going to be doing a fight skip. Right there that skips a nice. fighting the yellow limp again. Uh, which is nice because we didn't have another item so we would have had to take a long time to beat it. And so at this point, we're going to get the, uh, well, turn it to night first, right? Uh, yeah, pretty much. So we're going to be, we're going to come out of here. We're going to bloom Shinshu Field a bit uh, and make it pretty again as well. Um, Bloom's pretty cool. It makes, it makes things pretty. That's like, that's pretty much what it does. It's pretty cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then yes, we'll be we'll be going on over and starting a little side quest. Well, and importantly, that red and black is the the cursed uh, area. Yes, it gets rid of that too. You are you are not meant to go in there. It is a bad place. <laughs> of course, with that said, we do go through the cursed area at one point, but we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll <laughs> get there. So how many times do you think you've played Okami at this point? <laughs> um, I have played it many, many times. Um, <laughs> I've played it a couple times casually, and then since speedrunning I've beaten the game probably many, many times. Right here we do have our second pet of the game. This is uh, Mika. Um, he's, a, he's a priest. He has a side quest about beating some monsters. Um, <laughs> and rather importantly, that quest changes it to nighttime. So that's pretty that's pretty cool. Um, because <laughs> our next brush power that we want requires it to be nighttime. Uh, but first we have to do a little tutorial for this quest. Uh, we're supposed to defeat these named imps uh, that have little uh, arrows in them that tell us they're super especially mean. Um, but that just gives us a little bit of a little bit more money. Money is important to this route. Um, we're going to be doing some pretty big skips as time goes on, so money is a little bit tighter than the game intends it to be. And, um, I don't know, chat, you might or might have not have noticed that there's a bark button in Okami. You can bark. <laughs> and Lego is using that at the end of fights, basically, to get that result screen sooner. So every time that a fight is over, we get lots of barking. <laughs> yes, barking, barking makes that money screen go way faster. Um, so I'm in fact, you know, not only is barking in the game, I am required to use it by speedrunning law. Um, <laughs> you know, so could we cool. maybe get a, a donation train going? Just a bunch of woofs and barks. <laughs> that would be great. Yes. yes, maybe some some borks. Uh, 
but right here we are getting our next brush power. This is Cherry Bomb. So Cherry Bomb is going to be very important to this run. Um, one thing to mention is that for this game a long time, the biggest category was New Game Plus, which basically lets you, because you have late game abilities and some other stuff, enemies aren't a problem. But for this category, enemies are something that we have to have pretty concrete st uh, strategies to beat. And Cherry Bomb is going to be our main strategy to beat a lot of enemies uh, as, we, as we go on. And then right here, we are meant to go back to uh, Kamiki Village, and we're supposed to get another brush power, Lily Pad, which lets you um, jump on water. Uh, you can create them on water, and that makes sure you don't like drown or something. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it's required right here to uh, get through here, or at least it's meant to be required. Um, right here, by swimming all the way down, uh, we're meant to draw Lily Pad so we can get up on this ledge, but there's a little glitch in the game where some corners in water just kind of push you out of the water. They make you jump. Nice. And so by getting pushed and jumping out of the water there, we are able to uh, get a wall jump that gets us on that ledge, and we skip lily pad, and that saves like five minutes or something. <laughs> Still not the, the biggest skip in this run, though. No, there will be, there will be <laughs> many, many big things later down the line. And so right there, we just go right down and bloom Agata and uh, bloom bloom Agata Forest. Uh, that's that's where we are now. I realize I should say that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think this is Waka Skip. So there's supposed to be a, a boss fight, and what's happening is uh, Lego is actually going on a brush adventure. So you can sort of uh, get you get a little bit of camera movement with the brush, but you can actually break it out, and you can see that now we have the camera really moving like way further than it's supposed to go. And then you can use a brush power to warp to a cursed patch and skip that boss fight and skip a bunch of movement and all of that. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> right here I'm going to pick up uh, an herb feed bag. Feed bags are for feeding animals in this game. Uh, it is a very optional part of this game, but uh, right here this is going to be half blue skip. Uh, I shouldn't explain this because I need to focus. <laughs> yeah, like, you, you focus. Um, so this is the kind of, so there's an optional side quest here for Sleepy the Bear we talked about earlier. Um, and we can do a really big skip if, so Lego is gonna get the cabbage basically placed in just the right spot. You saw her cut the, the torch, and then the idea is the torch is gonna respawn after 10 seconds, and it's going to push the cabbage into triggering a cutscene with Sleepy. But if you go into the brush adventure at that right time, when the torch respawns, triggers that cutscene, you're all, um, she's also going to warp to another curse patch with this brush adventure. And basically what's happening is you're... Oh no! Well, if it worked, you'd be able to sort of get a, a certain state where you can move while the cutscene's going. Unfortunately, it's a one, one-time trick. Yep. That's so all right. So now we get to see other tricks. Yep. We'll, we'll get to... There's going to be a little bit of a route change, but that's all right. We'll get there. So this is what I wanted to do. Uh, before. Uh, I'm doing it here because it's still pretty much my best option. Um, this is the brush adventure uh, where I go over here and ideally I would have triggered the cabbage would have been pushed into the trigger with Sleepy the Bear at the same time as I restored this curse patch. Um, and that would have caused a lot of shenanigans that would have let me Across the Agata River early, but it's okay. We'll just get to do some different skips. Um, <laughs> this is we still we've still got some stuff, fun some fun stuff even if we don't get the the especially the weird skip. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, flip into Suda Bruins. Um, yep, <laughs> you can just go right in. Uh, you're meant to do a fishing game to get a key to get inside, but we don't we don't need to do that. We can just jump. And uh, the power of trees. Uh, trees is part of the bloom brush power. They're they're not really very useful even casually, but uh, they end up being useful in speed running. 
so I'm trying to do the the more tree shenanigans. There we go. So the block head skip. Yep. Yep. Uh, (laughs) So I just skipped about half the dungeon. Um, So (laughs) what happened here is, uh, you know, basically the same as before, a little different. We had to clip all the way through block head. but the, the idea is the same, where just kind of the tree pushes us so far, and if we combine that in that case with a tackle to push us back, it's enough to just push past the wall. Um, it's tough, but got through. And for anyone who's like interested in speedrunning this game, um, because the, the that half blue skip was missed, this is a slightly different path. Um, but this is some of the stuff we'd see later in the run under normal circumstances. Yeah, we'd still be doing a lot of this. Um, and right here, we're going to have just three fights in a row, um, along with some other stuff. So this is actually a great time for some donations. Well, thankfully, I've got plenty. Lots of people are excited for Okami, including trainer Anade, who says, wishing you the best of luck, Lego, and that the demon boosts don't troll too hard. You got this. (laughs) We've got $25 from Ruddy J, who says, must pet dog. And $50 from Ball, who says, love me some Okami. Let's go. <laughs> and remember, chat, I, I did make a request. Can we get a $5 donation train going? Make make me say a woo and woof and bark some more? <laughs> Maybe? Just let me know. Do I still have time? Yeah, we still got some time for some more. All right, all right, all right. I've got $25 from Cam, who says, Okami's a wolf, right? <laughs> <I win!" laughs> Perfect. And $5 from Chase, who says, Okami is a game with many treasured memories for me. Fantastic game, fantastic woofer, and a fantastic cause to donate to. P.S. My favorite feature of the game? Press A to bark at nothing. (laughs) As much and as often as you want. 10 out of 10. (laughs) All right, right here, I'm doing a little bit of a skip. um, By, we're meant to climb up on those mushroom platforms that grew to go up and slash those pots uh, that were spewing icky poison. But uh, we can do, not really a brush adventure, just kind of moving the camera in a way that we can see the pots from the bottom and get them from there. So here uh, we're going to, that, that was the triple gate room, get through there. Uh, Tsudo now has clean water again, and that lets us get into this room, which is the vine room. Uh, there's three curse patches to restore here. Um, curse patches are, you know, we used them for some skips earlier. Uh, we use it to skip the walk fight, and we're actually going to use it for some uh, some skips later too. So, yeah, the bloom the bloom brush power lets us uh, do quite a lot. Uh, even though it's just meant to make the world pretty, it ends up being very useful for speed running <laughs> skips. Uh, it's pretty cool. And so this is the vine power. It's uh, you know we draw from the uh, vine to Madarasu, and that lets us do that. And now we have cookie. Clip. Cookie Clip is uh, another, it's sort of a brush adventure, but it's also a lot of other things. Uh, it's a very complicated trick. Uh, but basically, I'm going to go up here, get this vine, drag it to Ami, and then if I do this right, I'm going to get out of bounds just barely, go use this vine to pull us back up. That's good enough. Yep, we're good. All right. And then we fall right into the room we were supposed to go. So that is our first example of an interior clip uh, where the rooms in uh, dungeons and the overworld and everywhere, anytime you go through a little like scroll cutscene and then it pops you out somewhere else, the game is just teleporting you to somewhere else in the world. And so we use that fact because 
those little other places in the world are stored below the main map. So by getting out of bounds and falling, we can fall directly down and skip uh, what would have just been, that wasn't actually that big of a skip in terms of time, it's only 20, 30 <laughs> seconds, but it's very cool uh, to get out of bounds in that way. Heads up, this is a spider boss. It's not like very long, but no. briefly. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we have a we have a pretty good strategy to beat Spider Queen, um, and it's to use Power Slash. Like I said, it's kind of good. <laughs> oh, uh -oh. oh no! Oh no! Oh, that's that's uh -oh. A, that's tragic. Uh, it's all right. We'll just have to open Spider Queen's uh, blood again. Um, <laughs> ideally, you actually only need five power slashes to take out Spider Queen, but ended up missing a few too many times there. Didn't hit all the uh, eyes that she has. Marathon luck. It's, it's just how it goes. <laughs> but that is Pseudo Ruins. So by doing that, we can get out and head on our way. So earlier in the run, we would have... Uh, had I gotten that skip earlier, half blue skip successfully, um, it would have done some very weird stuff that would have let me cross the Agata River early, um, which would have been super cool. But we got to see some other cool stuff too. Um, but now we have the intended way to get across this river. Uh, this is Kokari, um, and he's the fisherman. We should have actually. This is he's also the one with the fishing game that we skipped earlier. Uh, when we flipped into Pseudo Ruins. But this is just a river mini minigame. Um, we are being swept away on, uh, uh, by... Uh, on the river, on this log. And so now we are... We just need to drag the vines to here to slow it down. Um, I actually missed a vine earlier, which was a little bad, because the way this game works is a little weird, where if you miss one of the vines, the little blossoms that are on the side, uh, basically the locations of the future blossoms change. So it's always the same if you get all of them, but if you miss any, it's I don't know what's going to happen after that. <laughs> but, well, you uh, got it. So. We got it, and now we're <laughs> across there and heading into Taka Pass. So, like many other areas of the world, Taka Pass also has a lot of first parts to it. Uh, our first order of business is going to be heading over to the shop here. Um, so at this shop, I got a, a thing earlier, but for now I'm buying four meat feed bags, we'll need that later. I'm buying three steel fist sake. So steel fist sake is a very broken item. Um, <laughs> it for my regular attacks that you've barely seen so far, it doubles the power of them. And for most brush powers, it doesn't double the power of any of them, except for one. And that one happens to be Cherry Bomb. And Cherry Bomb is already the, probably the best power in the game. Um, but when you double the power of Cherry Bomb, it becomes a little ludicrous. Um, so this is our mini boss. This is Waka. We were supposed to fight him earlier as well. Uh, we skipped him. Um, but just four cherry bombs boosted by Steel Fist Sake is enough to take him out. So that's that's the Waka fight. <laughs> a little a little <laughs> bit short. Uh, but you know, that's how we like it with speedrunning. Um, and now we have a little bit of a running section. Yep. Alright, so if you want to get in a couple donations. I do actually have quite a few <laughs> donations. So there are quite a few people who want me to, to bork and woof. So we've got $10 <laughs> from Rye who says, here's $5 for each of our dogs. Tyrion says, bork, bork. And Corbin says, shoo, shoo. <laughs> <laughs> Very sleepy dog there. And we've got $25 from Faye who says, Okami is one of my all-time favorite games, and I own it on every single platform it's available on. I've never seen a speedrun of it before, and I'm loving every second. 
That's awesome. I originally played it on the PS2 and still have my copy, so I can still see those beautiful clouds, Clover Studio scrolling credits. <laughs> this, this goes towards the crosscode bonus run. Good luck on the run, Lego, and pet that dog, Bork! <laughs> and remember, we do have that incentive crosscode level 99 bonus run that is going to happen at the end of that crosscode run. Our goal is $3,000. We are currently at $565. So if you want to see that, make sure you get your donations in ASAP. <laughs> All right, you can see um, Lego is doing this little mole mini game. You have to find the blue mole and you get a golden teacup. Yep. And we're going to bring this golden teacup all the way back here um, to the tea master, um, I believe. Uh, something like that. He's, he's pretty cool. Uh, and he gives us a golden mushroom. Also, rather importantly, you know, since we did this, we might as he, he can pet us. He's, he can pet us. Yay. He's cool like that. Yay! <laughs> All right. Um, and so that uh, that whole thing is just a complete side quest. Um, it's not required under normal conditions, but for this, uh, it's going to end up being pretty useful uh, later on. So we'll we'll get to that when we get to that. Um, it's a bit of a you know, you give one thing to one person, and then you give another thing to another person, and one of those kind of quests. <laughs> but at the end, we'll have something very nice. This is another fight. Um, this is a pretty important one, though. So this uh, devil gate, as they're called, um, has behind it a, uh, or maybe not behind it, inside of it. I don't know exactly how this works. Um, uh, a, it's just a pool of water, but specifically, it's a mermaid spring. And mermaid springs are going to act as fast travel points there down the line. So we're just uh, activating it now, so we can use it later. And of course, doing that just makes the world a little bit more pretty, and that's always cool too. <laughs> but from here, we're heading to Sasa Sanctuary. Uh, Sasa Sanctuary is not where we're supposed to go right now. Uh, the way in is blocked by a gate because the boss's daughter has been kidnapped, taken away. Um, and spoiler alert, we are not going to be finding that daughter and getting, <laughs> uh, getting in the correct way. Instead, we're going to be doing a very finicky trick. Um, this is Sasa Sanctuary early. So by jumping right at the edge there and getting it just right, uh, I should hopefully, on one of these attempts, just kind of land sort of randomly. Um, it'll, it'll look a little strange, but if I manage to get that landing, I can do another jump, and from there I will get out of bounds. And there we go. All right, nice. so yeah. Um, that landing is called a seam grip. They're very finicky, but now that we're out of bounds, like in Suda Ruins, uh, this is another interior clip. So we're going to be falling down and getting inside of Sasa Sanctuary by uh, by just falling in. Uh, pretty normal way to get in, I think. <laughs> um, here we talk to this uh, dancing bird. Um, they're sad because their hot spring has dried up. Uh, so now I need to dig for some more water for them. So if you've played digging games, there might be some things with this one that you never saw before. One is that you can use cherry, bomb, cherry bombs to blow up basically any rock other than the indestructible ones. The second is that by circling NPCs like we do to have them pet us, um, they actually, the NPC in a digging game will run faster. Um, so. It's some, it's some cool tech that makes this a lot faster than it would be casually, and two things that I know I personally never used <laughs> when I was playing originally, because you just don't think about it. Uh, but this is going to get us another brush power, so by getting their water back, we have another constellation, and this one is uh, Water Spout, is the power we're getting back. Uh, water Spout is pretty much just required in a couple areas to get through. Um, we can draw water from place to place, or we can make these water spouts. Uh, 
water pillars that kind of just take us up. Um, right here, just opening a gate. And then after that, that little dancing bird, now that he's all happy and stuff, uh, you know, I think, I think, I think a, a petting is due. Yay! Because everyone loves Ami. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, sadly not everyone. There's actually some That's NPCs true. of the game who will not pet you. Um, and it's very rude. It's very rude of them. Uh, it's, I, I, I don't know why they even allowed that in the game. Uh, this is Ty. They don't even program it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is Ty. Ty will also pet us. Um, Ty is sad because they're missing their... Uh, oh, they're missing their dog. Um, right in front of us, we have this floating thing that just kind of appeared. Uh, because we sequence uh, break into Sauce Sanctuary, we have an item floating that we are supposed to obtain later, uh, which we will. Um, but it takes us to these, um, this, this dog right here. This is, this is the dog they were worried about. Uh, this is Take, and this is also going to be our first dog fight. So dog fights are some of the hardest fights in the game. This one especially is the hardest. So all it takes is three cherry bombs, but they move a lot, especially Take. And Take really wants to just jump everywhere. And cherry bombs, wow, that was an amazing fight. Nice. I just have to say it. That was... Taki played very nice there. Uh, basically, the problem is that cherry bombs have a very small uh, activation radius. Basically, like they they if if a, if they're not like right next to an enemy in the right way, it won't uh, they won't blow up. And so sometimes if you if you place it and the dog just just jumps away, and the other problem is you can't place more than one bomb at a time, so it can get very uh, it can slow you down very quickly. Uh, but that went extremely well, so happy about that. And from here, we actually are going to use this mermaid pool, which uh, the hot spring that we just opened up happens to be, and use that to warp back to Taka Pass to that mermaid spring I opened up before. Uh, this is also our only way out of here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, the gate is still closed. Yes. <laughs> Um, and from here, we can head on uh, up this hill to Kusa Village. Um, and this is also a good time for a couple more donations. I got them. We've got a $13 donation from E. Glads, who says $13 for the 13 brush techniques. <laughs> I <will. laughs> And $25 from Penguin with a Gun. Who says, <laughs> doggo, girl power, and cell shading? Yes, please. It really is the perfect game. <laughs> it's, a, it's a beautiful game. $25 from Barbecue Steve, who says, had to donate during this run. I've played Okami since shortly after release on PS2. Go, full throttle, excuse me. Go, full throttle, Ami. <laughs> Perfect. And now, <clears throat> sorry, and now we're in Kusa Village. Yep, so this whole area is, uh, you can see it's kind of got this weird stuff kind of floating across the screen. Uh, it's cursed, our brush powers, we actually can't even use them here. Um, but by going over here and talking to Princess Fuse, uh, you can see that the cause of this is these imps that were, I don't know, plaguing her mind. Um, but by beating them up a little bit slowly, uh, because we can't use our brush powers to take them out, um, that curse air will be free and we can return, everything returns to relatively. Um, Fuse here has a bit of a problem. She, uh, she's sort of the head of the canine warriors, and the problem is they all left. Uh, we actually... One of them we fought in Sasa Sanctuary. Um, oh, there we go. Uh, she'll also pet us because she's she's cool like that. Um, <laughs> but um, oh, what was I saying? Oh, right. So there's eight total dogs that we need to get back for her. Four of them are relatively easy to get. They're just in the village. Um, so and these four that are in the village, we can just feed them some meat, and that'll be enough to bring them back to Fusei. Uh, so that's why we bought those meat feed bags. Um, 
but the other four, uh, well, we have to fight them to to get them to respect us. And so because of that, and and those four are a lot more scattered. So one of them was off in Sasa Sanctuary, and the other two will find later as well. This is Mr. Bamboo. Yay. He helped us with the digging and, you know, <laughs> some more petting. <laughs> Uh, these dogs are also all hidden in weird spots. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Both Take and this dog here, Chi, are in bamboo, and I don't know how they got in. It's very impressive. <laughs> um, we have a little bit of a skip here. Um, so once again, curse patches are useful um, to get to Shin. We do a little bit of a brush adventure up here, and we can restore this curse patch all the way from down here. And like before, this will just warp us right up to it. And we can feed Shin. And then after this, there's going to be a little bit of a bug. So because we already went to Sasa Sanctuary and we already fought Take, the game has already counted us as having four dogs. Um, and because of that, it right now thinks that we already fed all four dogs that are in the village. So we actually unlock uh, fighting Tay, the dog you're supposed to fight first, um, without actually feeding all four dogs. Uh, so we'll 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 see the ramifications of that as well in a second. Uh, but first, let's fight Tay. Tay's the edgiest of the dogs. Uh, you know, <laughs> scar of the eye, ready ready to take us out. Uh, and while he may be the edgiest, he also is the weakest. He actually only takes two cherry bombs to blow up with our Steel Fist Sake, and he just kind of goes down immediately. Um, fights in this game, the regular fights are very much trivialized compared to normal gameplay. Um, but, you know, it's fast. It's very fast. <laughs> and then right here we have uh, the dog we were supposed to feed before. And we can feed them. But the problem is, after we feed them, they actually take us to where we were originally supposed to find them um, before Tay appeared. And that, that's super useful because this is actually closer to the front of the village, and so we can actually just get out of here a little bit faster. Um, we'll be coming back here later once we've fought the other two dogs that are around the world. But uh, for now, we're, we're heading on. And uh, this is a good time for a couple more donations. Wonderful. Well, I would like to let you know why we are here today. Well, a fund is working for a world where every girl can learn and lead. With more than 130 million girls out of school today, Lala Fund partners with education advocates and activists who are breaking down barriers that hold girls back. So please, Get your donations in and help us raise money for Malala Fund. And I've got a $12.34 donation <laughs> from Infrabread, who says, I had the Wii version of this game when I was younger and love to watch it get destroyed like this. <laughs> I even have an Ame figurine on my shelf. Oh, jealous. Thank you so much for that donation. So right here, uh, we're not going the correct way. Uh, <laughs> this is City Checkpoint. Uh, this game is sort of divided into three major arcs, and we're not meant to see anything of the second or third arc before we finish the first. Uh, but this is sort of like a little teaser of where you're supposed to go after, and we're going to we're going to do a little bit a little bit of skipping. Um, by swimming across and getting on this rock, we can land on top of the rock, do a sliding ground tackle, jump out of the tackle in midair, and then do a wall jump followed by a bonk to just make it onto the other side. Uh, this is not how you're meant to see it. It's uh, not, not correct. Um, so no, you're not meant to be here, but we, we get across and move on. Um, and that takes us to Ryoshima Coast. Um, so by doing that skip, we've skipped a ton of the game. Uh, to get over here, we're meant to uh, complete a huge, very long dungeon that would normally take about 20 minutes. Um, 
along with some other things to get in there. So that skip ends up saving about 25 minutes. Um, so very, very big skip. Uh, right here we're running through the curse zone. There's a fight down there, but by just going into the curse zone we can go around it. <laughs> and then we're going to follow that with another brush adventure to put the camera out of bounds. And there's a puzzle here to take water from a pool at the bottom and carry it from pool to pool all the way to the top. But if you put the camera out of bounds, you can just take it all the way from the bottom to the top uh, <laughs> in one go. Um, I also had a little bug there where because I filled multiple pools at once when doing that, uh, the game actually let me open the map and move around during that cutscene. Uh, you can't do anything useful with it, but it's fun. Uh, <laughs> But now we've bloomed Ryushima Coast, which, uh, you know, has, I will say, one of the most beloved themes in the game. It's really good. <laughs> um, but from here, we're going to, uh, we got we got some things we want to do. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is another interior clip. So by just, this is, this is very finicky, there's a tiny little hole in the collision. Very tiny. And if you get it right, you can just kind of slip on through like that. Um, it's very tiny. It's smaller than Ami. I don't think we actually know why it lets you get through, but we appreciate it. Um, <laughs> but by doing that, we can fall all the way down into the dojo. So this is uh, Onigiri Sensei. And from him, we're going to get the power of double jump. Uh, before we get that power, obviously, we need to get pet. Um, <laughs> I, I love all the hearts every single time we get pet. Yes, it's very sweet. It's very, <laughs> very sweet. Um, so, you know, considering how much stuff we've already been able to do in this game uh, with just having a single jump, um, I'm sure you can imagine that there is a lot more for us now that we have the ability to jump twice uh, to skip some stuff. So there'll be some cool stuff uh, coming up. I mean, that, that double jump is the main reason we do the city checkpoint early skip, right? Uh, it does skip a lot of stuff on its own, but it will let us do a couple skips that we couldn't otherwise um, when we go. We are going to go back eventually to that first arc of the game to defeat those dogs and do a couple other things. Um, and so there are a couple skips that we couldn't do without double jump. Um, but the primary reason for city checkpoint skip is just it skips a lot of the game. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that we don't have to do now because of that. Uh, right here I'm going to do another fight skip. So this is the Ubume fight, and you can just jump around it like that. Uh, that one's sometimes just you get stuck on the wall and you hit the fight, but luckily I didn't there. And now we are entering Seon City. Another trick, this is Fire Burst Early. Um, we get on this collision up here, which is a little jank, and do some do some hopping from place to place. Oh no! Oh no! Alright, I need I need to focus on this. Yep, go ahead, you focus. <laughs> so so I mean basically what she's doing is she's she has to get the timing just right to to jump. Basically, there's a very brief moment where, like, you've landed, um, and then you can get out of bounds. There we go, and do yet another interior clip down into the restaurant, where we're going to get fire burst. Yep. So the power in Moon Cave that we were supposed to get, uh, that dungeon that we skipped by doing City Checkpoint, um, is Inferno, and it is required later on, or pseudo required. We need the ability to uh, move fire in some way. And this game has upgrades to powers uh, that you get through side quests. Like, for instance, Fire Burst is the upgrade to Inferno. And very nicely, we don't actually need the original power to get the upgrade. So now for all the uses of Inferno, uh, we'll just use this instead. And so that, that lets us completely skip needing to go to the Moon Cave and do anything with that. We pick up. Get a pet? Oh, 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 you're right. <gasps> I almost forgot a pet. That would have been <laughs> terrible. Uh. There we go. Don't worry, chat. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Now we can we're, go. We're good. We're good now. We got the pet. That's what matters. <laughs> Most important thing in the game. <laughs> it is really an amazing mechanic. It's 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 just there. I don't even know if the game actually tells you about it anywhere. I don't remember it being <laughs> so. It just it's just kind of there. By the way, lots of people will pet you. Uh, but that's actually all we're doing here. We need that power. Um, we also got a bunch of money from getting that power, interestingly enough. Um, but for now, we're we're just moving on. Uh, this is this trick here is called toaster, um, or in normal terms, uh, North Ryoshima early. <laughs> oh. You can focus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you need to. Um, so, so Lego has to basically land very precisely on the edges, and so, um, and it uses sliding ground tackle without losing speed to get over this gate here. Um, and so it, it's a very precise kind of movement because there's there's a really interesting mechanic that this game to try to I guess prevent speedrunners from doing this. <laughs> Um, they put jump barriers on all the mountains, or at least certain mountains. So while you're on the mountain, the jump button doesn't work. Um, but if you're on or above the mountain, so you have to do this very precise um, landing on the edge, sliding ground tackle to get over it like that. Yep. So we avoid that jump barrier by doing the tackle until we're actually above like just the regular ground below but the game still lets you jump out of a ground tackle until that animation ends. And so the jump button will work for, for just a little bit. Um, and that lets us uh, get to this area early. Um, that's a, there's a whole part of the game that we essentially, we, we sort of already skipped by doing that. Um, but the ramifications of skipping that uh, will require a lot more skips down the line. So we'll, we'll get there when we get there. Uh, this was the Earth Nose fight. Um, those wheel enemies, every single one dies to two cherry bombs and a power slash. Um, cherry bombs really are just amazing. They, <laughs> they just kind of win. Uh, right here I'm going to buy some mermaid coins. This is how we're meant to um, get around the world. Uh, this is for fast traveling. And that's all the mermaid coins we'll actually need for the rest of this. Um, I also bought four Steel Fist Sake, and that is also all the Steel Fist Sake we need for the rest of this. Um, and so now that well, we've sort of, we've pushed all the way into the second half of the second arc of the game. Um, now that we've gotten all the way here, we're going to head back and finish up what we, were supposed, what we need to do during the first arc of the game. So this is Kushi. Um, She's also in from Kumiki Village, and she just also got past that boulder somehow. Uh, some of these people are very <laughs> strong, I gotta say. They're very strong to, to get past that. Um, here's Suzano here to save the day again uh, with another quick time event. Suzano is not actually very powerful on his own, so we have to help him out with all of these. <laughs> have to have to do the heavy lifting for him. Um, and since we just helped Kushi out, you know, and she's right here, might as might as well get a, get another little pet in. <laughs> Yay! Yay! From here we are. Uh, where we had to do that little bit because. The next dog fight that we need to do, uh, along with some other stuff, requires us to first do that. Uh, so here's Kokari. Kokari is doing some fishing. Uh, real quick, you know, we can still get some pets. more pets in. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but most importantly, this is now the fishing game. We skipped the first fishing game earlier, um, and that's going to actually be a little... That this whole thing's gonna be a little bugged because of that. So, that first fishing game, you're meant to catch a giant salmon, and that's called the key to pseudo ruins. And this one, you're meant to catch the whopper, and that's uh, that has both the moon and a dog inside of it. Um, so, <laughs> um, as as happens. Yeah, as as happens. You know, very very normal. Um, so. <laughs> 
Uh, but because we skipped that first game, we're gonna have some some unintended stuff here where I'm actually going to be this the game we're in is the first game, so I'm gonna be catching the salmon. But when I go back to uh, I don't know the real world after <laughs> after doing this, um, the game will uh, act like I have already. Uh, will act like I actually did both games. So I'll get the key to suit of ruins, even though I don't need it anymore. Um, and I'll also get to fight the dog. Because that dog is in fact one of the canine warriors that we so care about. Right here we're getting the power of Crescent. Um, Crescent uh, is the opposite of Sunrise, just lets us turn it to night whenever we want. Uh, sunrise, outside of like required store uses, we don't really care about turning it to daytime in this run, uh, but turning it to nighttime will be useful later. Uh, this is Ume. Uh, say hello to Ume. Um, do three cherry bombs. And say bye to Ume. <laughs> <laughs> bye, Ume. Ume. Ume is by far the easiest fight. Um, he just kind of always takes his time, and that lets us always blow him up. Um, yeah, it's very nice that so many things in this game are so weak to uh, explosives, you know? It may come as a surprise, <laughs> but if you blow up a dog, it hurts. Um, but no, don't here, blow up dogs. The dog's okay. The dog's okay. Okay. <laughs> well, he, he can take it. He's, uh, the dogs in this are the canine warriors who are, like, super powerful. And there's actually some stuff later where they're one of the hardest fights later, like some optional stuff. But uh, obviously we, we aren't doing optional stuff unless it benefits us in some way. It's <laughs> 90%. Uh, um, and so right now we're heading back to Kamiki Village. Uh, Kamiki Village, uh, you know, when we left, it was restored, but it didn't actually have, uh, you know, if we come back, there's going to be a boulder in our way, um, or so, or so you would think, because, I mean, we, we jumped over a boulder to get out. Um, right here, there's some dialogue here, because the game is like, oh, you haven't gone lily pad yet, are you sure you want to head back to, uh, Shinshu Field? <laughs> um, or not Shinshu Field, Kamiki. Um... But the boulder's just gone. It's just gone. There's no more boulder. Um, if you progress the game far enough, uh, Kamiki Village sort of just fixes itself. <laughs> and so because of that, we can just kind of, we can, we can just, you know, it's, it's just gone. Uh, they, they took care of it on their own. <laughs> they, they got this. Exactly. So this is Hayabusa, uh, our final dogfight. Uh, there's a little bit of tech specific to this fight where cherry bombs will always explode when they're touching like a grass patch like this. And we can actually use that to blow up, uh, to just have the bomb explode immediately and get a free hit in that way. Um, this is less than ideal, but uh, well, we, we got the fight done with. Um, and that's all the dog fights. And so, now that we have done all those fights, uh, we're going to head back to Kusa Village uh, to talk with Fusei again. Um, and this is this is quite a run, so this is a good time for uh, lots of donations. Well, I've got lots of them. I've got $5 from Silver and Onyx, who says, Okami is one of my all-time favorite games. How could I not donate during this run? We adapted our very own Almost Wolf, Silphy. Though she may not be able to summon the sun or make fireworks, she graces us with dainty awoos <laughs> and fills our lives with love and laughter. She's a brave girl, just like Ami. <laughs> and we've got $100 from Echo Parallax. There is no comment, but I do want to mention that $100 did go to the Crosscode Level 99 bonus run. Crosscode is there's about what three hours left until that run. My math is probably wrong, but <laughs> the goal is three thousand dollars, and it is currently sitting at seven hundred seventy. So, 
So if you want that extra cross code, you have to get your donations in before then. Do I have time for a couple more? Oh, yes, definitely. All right, all right, all right. I've got $10 from Genko who says, donating from my roommate's dog, Luca, the loudest and most determined animal I have ever met. <laughs> as soon as this run is over, she's getting all the pets. And there's no Bork or Awu in this, so I'm just gonna add one. Awu! <laughs> and $25 from Marduk who says, doggy! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much for those amazing donations. We do have time for like one more. All right. Well, I, I, I do have a couple more. I've got $25 from Kyarel who says less than three. <laughs> and another $25 from Anonymous who also says less than three. Thank you all so much for your amazing donations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Perfect. Keep donating. It's to, it's to something really great. Uh, so now we're back in Kusa Village. Uh, we still got a little bit more running, but right here, uh, we finally, now that we finally have fed or fought all eight canine warriors, we can head back to Fusei and she will give us uh, the eight Satomi power orbs. Uh, and this is going to let us enter Gale Shrine, which before was blocked off from us. You mean we're going to do something in a sort of expected order? We are doing things in a sort of expected order. <laughs> it's, it's rather it's, it's rather sad. Um, there is actually a way to skip the entire dog quest and break into Gale Shrine, but it's too hard. Uh, <laughs> it's too hard and very inconsistent, so... It's uh, definitely not marathon safe and not even really doing it in any run safe. <laughs> <laughs> but now this is this is Gale Shrine. Um, we won't be finishing Gale Shrine. Uh, Gale Shrine is home to Crimson Helm. And by defeating Crimson Helm, we would unlock the path to uh, the Moon Cave and get be able to enter there. But we already got to Ryoshima Coast, and so uh, going into the Moon Cave is not necessary anymore, and as such, we don't need to fight Crimson Helm either. <laughs> I love how few of the bosses we see in the speedrun until the very end. Yeah, there's a there's a <laughs> boss rush at the end of this game where you fight uh, the main bosses of every dungeon, um, and when we get there in this run, we will have fought two of them um, out of five. Mm -hmm. So definitely a lot of a lot of skipping going on. This is the Chimera. Um, the Chimera is very weak to explosives, as you might expect. Uh, three Cherry Bombs does the trick. And that's, that's all you really need. Cherry Bombs cherry bombs in this game are truly, truly ridiculous. Um, I don't know what they were thinking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> A secret superpower. Yes. So doing this gets us another Lockjaw key. Um, and that will let us, that's just part of progressing through this dungeon. Um, and this is one of the lock jaws we actually see? Yes. Um, okay. <laughs> um, right there I threw away the key, but it's okay, because I have the key back now. <laughs> we're all, we're all good. Uh, yeah, I don't, you know, this game is very, very heavily inspired, uh, from Japanese mythology. Essentially everything is somewhat related to it um and while the locks do sort of fit into that um i also have no idea what they are <laughs> what they are part of um <laughs> and they're they're a little gross but uh we, we carry on so here we have a chimera uh, chimeras are very weak to cherry bombs three cherry bombs does the trick and <laughs> that's all you do once again uh, right here i'm going to do another little trick uh, at the end of this fight, I'm drawing a cherry bomb, and to get up here, we had to use a cherry bomb elevator, uh, where you give it a cherry bomb and it takes you up, and rather than having to fall back to the first floor, and then take us back to the second floor so that we can go to the third, uh, by drawing a cherry bomb at the end of that fight, it can fall all the way down and just bring us, uh, we can, we can just have it already here for us. Nice and waiting. 
the most interesting elevator I've ever seen. Yeah, definitely not <laughs> normal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, by doing all that, we're able to climb up to the top of Gale Shrine. Um, Kusa Village has had some issues. Uh, the divine winds that were once part of them have been sort of corrupted by Crimson Helm. But by coming here, we can uh, bring those divine winds back. So we're just, uh, we just have to draw these winds counter to the direction the evil winds are moving right now. And this uh, brings, back, brings back the divine winds. And that also unlocks the Gale Storm Brush Power. Gale Storm is uh, not particularly useful for fights or anything like that, sort of like Water Spout. The elemental powers just don't end up being very useful for a lot of stuff, but it is required for progression. And so we got to go. Um, right after this text, uh, I'm going to do a little skip. You're intended to just run all the way back and uh, go down that elevator that we climbed, that we not climbed up, but rode up. Uh, but by doing a double jump, uh, that this is a point where double jump saves time in an earlier area, we can do a bonk um, to get over an invisible wall and fall down to that path from earlier. And that just saves about 30 seconds from skipping a bunch of backtracking. Uh, but with that, that, we're out of here. Bonk. We are out of here. Right there, Isun uh, is like, "Oh, are you sure you want to leave? You know, you can't, you can't ignore Crimson Helm forever." But uh, <laughs> we, 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 we pretty much can. Uh, <laughs> so now that we finally finished a, um, with with that, we're all done backtracking uh, into into the first arc of the game. We're, we're done with we're done with the first arc. We got what we needed and we're, we're out of here. So from here, the game uh, is definitely going to pick back up again. Um, it's been it's been a bit, you know, a lot of a lot of intended things. You know, it's been a little bit a little bit too much intention in this run. So we need to, we need to change that. We need to break a little bit better. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Right here, I'm going to buy uh, three large exorcism slits. So, so far in this game, cherry bombs have been our main way of defeating enemies. But at this point, we are uh, our cherry bombs are going to not be as useful, especially against bosses. And uh, the large exorcism slits, though they cost a lot of money, uh, they are very powerful and are going to be very useful for taking out bosses. want to mention because I had seen someone mention pet percent. Mm -hmm. There is technically a run where you go and get as pet as many times as you can, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm the only one who's actually done it, but it's a bit of a meme in the community to uh, <laughs> pet the dog percent to have every single NPC who can pet you, pet you. Um, it's, it's, it's a cool category. It actually has a couple completely unique skips to it. Um, but not... Uh, it also is a full extra like hour or so, so obviously not doing that here. <laughs> uh, right here we can have Urushima, um, who's being bullied. We can actually uh, get him up by circling him like that. You're intended to like tackle him, but circling him works as well. And we can get Ted. <laughs> now we just run over here. We draw the sun in order to summon Orca. Orca is the... Uh, ambassador of the Dragonians. Um, so we'll get to see them in a bit, but for now, we're, uh, we, we, we can't really go there yet. They're at the bottom of the sea, and we currently do not have a way to the bottom of the sea. We are dog. We can't do that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> yet. <laughs> yet. Um, right there, I made it night because we'll need it to be night for something in a moment. Um, and from here, we're just running 
we're, we're, so at this point of the game, uh, there's this big area up here, and we're not meant to get up there without going to Catcall Tower to get the Catcall Power. Um, however, the, uh, we have other ways of getting up. So that right there is a Demon Boost. Nice! Um, those are pretty much luck-based. Um, it's a frame-perfect trick, but there isn't really a good cue to have it happen. Um, so, uh, just just sort of mashing is the best we have. Um, so getting it is very nice. Uh, here's the Watcher. Uh, we drew a star in the sky for him. Uh, we actually can't go all the way over to him because he's standing in the middle of a fight trigger that we skipped. Uh, <laughs> but So he has to come to us. But that's okay. Uh, but by drawing that star in the sky, he was able to wish the uh, uh, Whirlpool Galaxy back. And so then by drawing winds on Earth, we spin the galaxy in the sky. And then by spinning the Whirlpool Galaxy in the sky, that actually opens back up on Earth the Whirlpool. Um, <laughs> and that leads to the Dragonians. So it, it really makes a lot of sense if you think about it. Oh yeah, perfect sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we actually, we need Orca to take us there because even if the Whirlpool is open, we do not, we are still not capable of uh, just going down as wolf, um, as sad as that is. I mean, the doggy pedal's only good for so much. Exactly. <laughs> There's actually a pretty funny cutscene where if you do try to enter on your own, it just shows Ami getting swept into the whirlpool, but oh. you just end up back on shore. Um, so from here, we uh, we head out. Uh, we're, we're in the Dragon Palace. So, the Dragonians are having a bit of an issue with the Water Dragon, who is a Dragonia as well. Um, by, uh, I think it's the Dragon Orb, um, they can turn into, like, actual dragons. Um, and so, they have a bit of an issue where someone who turned into a dragon, the king actually, uh, has sort of gone crazy, um, and is, it's no longer safe. So we're going to have to take care of that. Uh, right here, uh, we have, sadly, the actual queen of the Dragonians won't pet us. Um, that's one thing, one reason NPCs won't pet you uh, is, is if they're sitting down, they won't pet you. Um, <laughs> so the queen won't pet us, but the guard who talked to us will. So, you know. At least someone pets us. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> And so Odohime gave us uh, basically the gave us the pass to head to the Dragon's Grove uh, where it sleeps, and so we can now head in there. Be because of course we have to go into the dragon, yes. right? That makes sense. It does make sense. <laughs> this game makes perfect sense always. It does. It does. This is how you. You know, the dragon's gone a little crazy. Sometimes you gotta go inside of it to, to help it out. <laughs> um, so, you know, in case you were wondering what the inside of a dragon looks like, I'm pretty sure this is what you guys were expecting. Um, you know, some crystals, some cool lights, some like <laughs> just enemies are down here. That's what those scrolls are. They're, they're full of enemies. Um, so, you know, a lot of, a lot of stuff down here um, for sure. But <laughs> uh, we're just <laughs> exactly over here. what you'd expect. Uh, some cool movement there to uh, those scrolls will target us, and they're very hard to dodge normally. But by uh, by jumping around the side platforms, we can avoid dealing with them entirely. Just throwing the key. It's just fun. How could you not? <laughs> So that there is the dragon orb, yes. the whole thing that we need to get, but it's kind of attached. Yeah, but you can't, it, it, this may come as a surprise, but you cannot just remove parts of people's bodies very easily. Um, <laughs> oh no. But you know, that's, well, maybe we, we, we do have a solution. Um, the, the dragon has, um, I, I think it's like literally, it has an ulcer. Um, 
this is this is it's not my fault. It's Japanese mythology. Okay. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. um, and so we can use some of that acid to completely break it, and this whole area gets flooded by this acid, um, and it's rather toxic to us. But we don't have lily pad, which is how you're meant to cross this, so we just have to swim through it. Uh, right here, I'm going to go into the first person camera uh, to draw the water from the stomach acid over to uh, over to the orb. This is how this is how we have to. Oh no! All right. Hopefully, hopefully it's still okay. Um, if I got all three of the hits in on the orb that I'm into, it'll just take me there anyway. Yep, there we go. <laughs> hey. um, so from here, we now have the two foxes. And this, these are the guys that were actually, um, these were the problem. Um, so we have to fight them. Uh, I'm actually power slashing all of them after I kill them. And that's because when you're in a um, scenario where enemies appear in waves, they appear not, the next wave appears not when the previous one dies, but when the previous one, um, when the previous one, like, their death animation ends. And so, normally they have a very long animation, and so the next wave will take a few seconds to appear, but power slashing them just instantly ends them. And so, by doing that, we can just get on out um, and make that battle go a lot faster. I want to point out that there is a timer in the bottom right because uh, the dragon is falling apart and we have to get out. Yes. Um, <laughs> I did do a little bit of a scary jump there across the water. Uh, this falling acid is completely random and if you get hit by the acid while jumping across, you will just fall all the way down to the water and lose like 10 to 15 seconds, but it's not too common, but uh, did did manage to get past that. Um, so we get out of there and we hear that uh, maybe we need to we need to go talk to Orohime, the queen of the Dragonians over here. Um, go go see she she has some issues. So by coming over here, we talk to her a little bit and she's like, by the way, the queen Himiko, who is in Sion City, uh, is in some danger. And we're like, oh no. Uh, when we did that toaster skip earlier, uh, we skipped meeting Himiko, as well as some other characters that we were supposed to meet. Um, so, we, we, did, we were supposed to already meet Himiko, but, you know, we, we, still, we still care about her. She's in trouble. <laughs> um, and so now we have to run all the way to the back of Seon City. Uh, so this is a great time for donations, uh, while listening to some of this banger music. Well, I've got some banger donations here for you. So, $20 from Pacific, who says, had to donate during Okami in honor of the best girl ever, Petunia. Arf, 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 arf. Which in dog <laughs> language means support Malala fun. <laughs> $25 from Smokey of the Sun, who says, loving this Okami HD run and very excited for Pokemon Coliseum later tonight. Doggo now? Espeon and Umbreon, the best doggos, later. A woo! <laughs> and we have a $250 donation from Lissa, who says, I love the art style in this game. It's so strong yet adorable, just like you all. Thanks for this wonderful event, the good you do, and the amazing community you cultivate. Heart emoji. You can yeah, we got a couple, couple more. more. All right, 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 right. Okay, $25 from Holly, who says, Who's a guy dog? <laughs> and $5 from Close Up Caption, who says, To all the runners and staff, you are awesome. Thank you all so much for your amazing donations. And remember, we do have that cross code level 99 bonus run. That incentive is $3,000. We are currently at $1,055. And remember, when you donate, if you want it to go towards an incentive, you do have to specifically select the incentive. 
just as a little reminder for everyone. Thank you again for all your amazing donations. All right, so sadly, the way into Seance City normally was uh, blocked off. So instead, we run around and the ghost of a character that we never actually met um, <laughs> tells us to, shows us a secret way into Seance City through, through a well. And so that's how we get in um, all the way to the back. Uh, so this is Queen Himiko's palace. Um, and this is also where another really big skip is because in order to stop you from uh, getting to Queen Himiko early, they were like, what should we do? How about a giant pool of lava? And to get across this, you normally would get the uh, fire tablet and that would let you swim across. But instead, I'll have to do something else. Yep, so I'm gonna let her focus. This is actually a double frame perfect trick. So basically, without the fire tablet, you have to get your gold dash, then you have to jump frame perfectly, then a second frame perfect jump just like that. Oh, that was really good. <laughs> that was beautiful. Yeah, that that trick can uh, sometimes it just doesn't it doesn't want to work and it takes many many tries. So I'm very happy that that went so quickly. <laughs> that was really good. Uh, so this is Evil Rao. Evil Rao is uh, an impersonator of the ghost that showed us the way in. Um, so she's she's kind of evil, uh, and she's actually the 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 big bad um, of this entire arc. Um, and so she's gone back to Oni Island, which is the home of monsters and other other evil things. But uh, the problem is that it kind of moves around all the time, uh, which is which is a bit of an issue in terms of like getting there. But Queen Himiko, before she completely died, told us that uh, where to find it. Um, so right now we're we're just running out of here all the way to where we can make it to Oni Island um, and complete, complete the second arc of the game. Uh, these guards are normally uh, part of this whole arc. Uh, this whole area is a little bugged right now. Um, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of things we were supposed to do here. Uh, you might have noticed that there's like green mist and stuff um, and it's just kind of bad. And that's because this whole area is under a plague and that plague is uh, not, it's, it's not good for the people. Um, and the before we were supposed to get even to North Ryoshima, the first arc of the game is all about, or the first part of the second arc is all about getting, uh, is all about getting this plague cured. Um, but we, we will not be doing that. Um, <laughs> now that we, when, when we did Fire Tablet Skip, that was the, final thing that really was stopping us from continuing on. We did also skip a brush power, Veil of Mist, which lets you slow down time, um, which will be required later, but we'll we'll do that. Uh, we'll, we'll deal with skipping that later um, when, when we actually need it. Yeah, unfortunately, here, I was just going to say, unfortunately, we're speed running, so we don't have time to cure a plague. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's okay. When we, when we beat the whole game, um, Everyone, everyone should be okay at that point. So <laughs> they figure it out. It's it's okay. So with Oni Island, um, normally it's not an issue, but there's a a time limit, right? Before you can yes. get to it. Otherwise, once the uh, once it turns to uh, once it turns to night, um, the uh, Oni Island will move again, and so we won't be able to get to it. And normally this isn't a problem, but because I have to do this trick again, this Demon Boost trick, um, it's, if I fail it enough times, I will have to sort of, uh, I'll lose even more time uh, to having to run back here. Uh, but luckily uh, we get it there. There we go. Yeah, that trick ends up being pretty much a coin flip on whether you get it or not, uh, but I got it there. And so now we go over there. Oni Island's kind of far out, and it's a bit of an issue, because, I mean, how are we going to get to Oni Island if, uh, if it's that far away? But luckily, Otohime 
after uh, after getting the dragon orb from her husband, who turned into a dragon being crazy, uh, she actually turns into the dragon herself and makes a bridge all the way to Oni Island. So nice of her. It is. It is very nice. So Oni Island is a very big dungeon. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff to do. First thing is we can't use this uh, fire pillar right here, so we have to do a precise jump to get past that. And then I'm going to bonk in a way that gets me out of bounds. And now that we're out of bounds, uh, what are we? What, what can we do out of bounds? <laughs> well, about halfway through this dungeon, um, the game sort of peeks outside again. Uh, you go inside, you do a whole bunch of races with uh, a paper slip named Toby, and then eventually you end up back outside for a moment again. And because it goes back outside, by jumping all the way around the mountain to the back of it, we can skip the entire first half of this dungeon uh, by just jumping around it. It's very nice that there's even, like, you're able to land on here. I don't know, they, it's very nice of them to have collision on all of this. Um, but from here, we can restore um, this tiger statue, um, and that will also get us another brush power, which coincidentally will, uh, after we get it, will just place us back in bounds, because it kind of assumes we're in bounds. <laughs> And by the way, one of the good things about doing, you know, all these awesome out-of-bound skips and things is we're not spoiling too much of the game either. Yes. So you There's still have so lots much of stuff game. for you to find out about <laughs> playing it yourself. So now I'm going backwards again. Um, this time it's to do a trick called uh, 2D Early or Awesome Skip. I can get this to work. Right here, I need a little bit of an extra boost to get over another invisible wall. But I'm, I'm missing it. Yeah, so uh, basically, I, I think it's this room just doesn't have a ceiling, so you're yes. able to get out of bounds and do, you know, the uh, <laughs> sort of interior <laughs> clip-ish? Uh, not quite. It's, it's more that we... Uh, we're just able to skip from one part of that map to the other part, so which would normally uh, be inaccessible without doing a whole bunch of other things. Uh, so that saves like two, three minutes. Uh, and now we're in the 2D section of Oni Island. Um, sorry, the side scroller part. Uh, right here, where the whole area is on cycles, um, where you, you want to try to do this as fast as possible, and if I get it right, I get uh, this big bamboo right there is in your way, but uh, if you are fast enough, you can slide right down to where you want to go. If you, if you miss that, you're blocked for like a few seconds. And speaking of cycles, that little mistake actually doesn't lose me any time, because now we have to wait for this cheese wheel, as we call them, <laughs> uh, to line up for me to jump through them. You always need a little bit of cheese in your speed run, right? Of course, yes. You, you could say we're just cheesing the entire game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then right here, so we skipped a bunch of races with Toby in the first half, and now we're going to skip the rest of them too. Um, <laughs> so by going over here, uh, we can line up to have a vine that's up here uh, drag us out of bounds again. We slice the vine, bonk, and then use the vine again, but instead it pulls us on the other side of this gate, which would normally be where the final race with Toby takes place. And uh, that's called Toby Skip, and it also saves Toby, because at the end of the race normally he would end up dying. But now Toby, Toby can live on, uh, our <laughs> speedrunner friend. So, yeah, so for those in chat who really like Toby, we don't get to see him, but we do save him, so... Yes. <laughs> you know, he's, he's there in your heart. That's what matters. Yep. 
Um, but because of all those skips we just did, we are already at the end of the dungeon. Um, it goes by very quickly. So now we get to fight the boss. This is Nine Tails. So to defeat Nine Tails, the first thing is I place a bomb right there, and that'll make her roar immediately. And then you use Thunderstorm, the power we got, to uh, break her apart into these individual spirits. And then those exorcism slips we got hit every spirit at the same time, uh, which saves, which means we can just take them all out immediately. Um, we have to do this twice. She has nine tails, but she only has like four spirits break out. So we have to do uh, four more of these. Um, and take them out. One important thing here is all the individual spirits drop money, so I am caring a little bit about trying to pick up as much money as I can before the fight ends. Um, but then this final phase, like I said, large excellent slips are our main tool at this point, and just using four of them is way faster than anything else we could do. And so that takes out nine tails. So by completing Oni Island, we have, uh, you know, saved, we, we finished the second arc of the game, saved this part of the world. And now we head on to the third arc of the game. Um, this is also, this is a good time for some more donations. Thank you so much. I actually would like to thank the Japanese Restream for providing an alternate language broadcast of Frost Fatales 2023. Japanese Restream is a community where people can enjoy various speedrun events held abroad in Japanese. They are broadcasting the event at twitch.tv slash Japanese underscore Restream on a delay. Check out their schedule by doing exclamation mark Restream in the chat. We would love for viewers to join their stream and support the event. Now that we're back in Chinchu Field, uh, there's this area of the game that you're really not supposed to get to until right now, even though this is one of the first areas of the game. Um, it's the Plateau, as we call it. Um, and we're meant to use Catwalk to get up there, but we skipped that earlier. So now we have to do a third Demon Boost. And this will be the final Demon Boost we do. Uh, the way this trick works is just uh, similar to at the beginning of the game, where a dialogue boost let us um, get over the boulder. There's a single frame as a fight switches to like the regular world, sort of, um, where you can get out this... Uh, there's one grounded frame, and with that grounded frame you can get a tackle out, and with that you can get up to the gear. Oh no! But, I mean, as you said, it's kind of a 50-50, so... Yep. I'm oh no. Very unlucky. <laughs> it's it's really trolling you this time. It definitely is. I'm I'm kind of impressed. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. Uh, it's alright, it's alright, we'll be okay. We'll be you okay. got this. See, you just had to say that. There that we was, go. That was all I needed. <laughs> it just needed a little drama. Exactly. So by getting up here, we can use Thunderstorm to rotate this dome, and that opens up a door that will let us enter Kamui, the northern land of this game. It's very snowy. So, Amui as an area um, is, you know, if you I, if you like this part of the game, um, I'm sorry, we will be skipping nearly all of it. Um, <laughs> we'll we'll be we'll be doing quite a lot of cool stuff in this area. So the first part of that is you're meant to go and meet Oki. Oki is part of the Oina tribe, who sadly cannot pet us because they can turn into dogs themselves. And if you try to circle them, it actually just turns them into their dog form instead of having them pet you. So, sadly, no pets from them. Um, 
but in this case, it doesn't matter because we weren't going to meet Oki anyway. <laughs> Instead, we can flip the camera out of bounds and do another brush adventure. Um, so the bloom power that we got all that time ago let us restore curse patches, it let us make trees, and it also let us bloom guardian saplings. And as it turns out, we are able to use trees and curse patches for skips, and we can even bloom guardian saplings to, uh, to skip some stuff. So this guardian sapling, you're meant to meet Oki, and then that opens up the way to have um, another guy, Yoichi, um, shoot arrows, and you can shock his arrow to have it blow up that rock um, that was covering the tree when we bloomed it. But uh, yeah, so now we've we've restored Kamui, gotten rid of the cursed area. We're gonna do another skip immediately here. This igloo turtle skip um, by drawing this vine, we can just drag ourselves over and around the uh, igloo turtle fight, um, which is a pretty annoying fight. And right here, um, I'm going to buy more slips, but I'm also going to buy three infinities. So infinities are um, an item that lets you use, uh, it lets, it basically doesn't, normally right now I have five ink pots. But with an infinity, I just will never run out of ink. Um, ink slowly restores over time, and for the most part, it doesn't affect stuff. But in this upcoming area, we're going to be using that power that we got for fire burst a lot. Um, not very surprising, using the fire power in the snowy area. <laughs> um, but using it requires three ink, and so because of this, we we really want to. I mean, we're going to need to use it a lot, and so it would take way longer to do anything if we didn't have the infinity to let us bypass that uh, refill restriction. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to do a skip here. This is a gate skip. Uh, right now we're in Wepkir, the uh, town for the Olina tribe. And, you know, they're, they have some problems. We could talk to them, and eventually they'd open a gate for us to let us move on. Uh, but that's kind of slow, so instead we're going to climb up this mountain until we can get over this invisible wall. And now we're just completely out of bounds, jumping around the outside here. Um, you know, as I the, the the textures here are a little weird, uh, or as I like to say, the snow is just really thick. And so that's why we <laughs> couldn't see Ami there. Uh, she was just you know jumping in and out of the snow. She was just having a good time. But that skips opening the gate, and now we can move on. Uh, but we haven't yet skipped all that much. Uh, so at this point, we, we were intended to open that gate pretty quickly. And now we are supposed to run up here and talk to someone who gives us an item. And that item will finally let us into Yash Pet, which is this whole, the beginning of this whole part of the game where we go back in time. We uh, meet the rest of like Isun's people, um, our little bug friend. Um, whole bunch of stuff that we would have done. Uh, but as you might be able to tell, we're not going to be doing that. Instead, <laughs> we will be uh, doing a trick here called Waku Early. So at the top here is the entrance to Waku Shrine, but it is locked off. But by jumping onto this house here, and then using this vine, vines are very useful, I don't know if you've noticed, uh, we can have it pull us up, and then with a odd bug. Um, for some reason, if you bind while on the ground, the game never takes away your ground jump. Um, and so because of this, you can use the vine to pull you up, and then you can just jump some more to get over the invisible wall and enter Waku Shrine. And so that skips a whole part of the game. Um, whole tons of stuff. scary cutscene saying, hey look, there are cannons. There these, are cannons. These should be scary. Uh, but we're not scared. Because they're, <laughs> they're kind of slow, and if you just run, they can't hit you. So, yeah. To defeat them, we're meant to use Veil of Mist, that power to slow down time, um, to slow down their shots and then reflect them back. But uh, we can also just ignore them. <laughs> right here, we're going to be doing another brush adventure to melt this icicle over here. Uh, and that skips getting the key for that lock trial, which would have taken about a minute. And then now we finally have the final part of skipping a catwalk. 
and it's, it's nicely called Catwalk Skip. It is. <laughs> so um, this is another one of those double frame perfect tricks where um, since we don't have Catwalk, you're supposed to climb up it, but instead, basically Lego is going to get stuck in um, ice, tackle out of it, um, and has to do that twice, and that's that double frame perfect trick to get it just like that. There we go. You're too fast. <laughs> I am. This, is, this has actually been a very good run. I'm very happy with how this has gone. Um, and so now that we finally skipped that last bit of catwalk, I did a, a little bit of a jump out from the platform, and that was just to skip a panning cutscene. Um, but right here, these gears, if you try to land on them normally, they would damage you, and you're meant to use a veil of mists to slow down time. But I can also just draw a fire burst. And as it turns out, fire burst has the weird secondary ability to slow down time, um, completely uh, nullifying the use for veil of mist. So, <laughs> very, works out very nicely. Uh, here is Great Tengu. Goodbye, Great Tengu. One large XM slip is all we need. <laughs> same old story, same old song. I used first person right there to uh, draw the fireworks close enough to melt that. Uh, if I got any closer, there is a very long panning cutscene. Uh, we're meant to go down and find the what the correct solution is to the puzzle, but we just already know the solution. And this gets us our final power of the game, Blizzard. Blizzard is, uh, we will use it one time after this tutorial. Uh, it is intended to be the final power of the game, and because of that, we get the Solar Flare uh, on our back, which is a better weapon. Uh, you're meant to get it as it, it's, you know, the reward for getting all 13 brush powers, but we've actually skipped quite a few brush powers, but the game still gives it to you, so. <laughs> That's nice of them. I appreciate that. <laughs> and we're immediately going to go into another skip here. This is the Nechku skip. Um, by jumping out of bounds again. This is very similar to the skip we did in Oni Island, where we got out of bounds um, outside, and then it pops out outside again later. And so we can just jump across. And now here, this is the Cannon Room. Cannon Room is very... Uh, um, I don't, yeah, that's the, that's the best way to describe it here. Um, to, normally all these cannons that are shooting at us, except the gold one, would all be... Oh, that was odd. Um, normally we would destroy all of them by, uh, by... I don't know, which one is it? Okay, it's this one. Um, okay, we're good. We have to defeat the gold cannon twice. The red cannons are supposed to be destroyed by our own cannons on the other side, but we can't destroy them uh, because that would... Fireburst does not work to light those cannons. You actually need uh, Inferno. And so because of that, we, uh, we do what we did here um, and just deal with the fact that they're all trying to murder us. <laughs> Uh, this is the hot gear room, uh, but rather than dealing with the hot gears, it's faster to just jump around the outside. Um, I missed this jump here. This jump is actually very tight, um, but this all is just way faster than actually trying to find a way to freeze the gears, um, since that's how you have to do it. Oh, I missed it again. There you go. And so from here, um, we have finally managed to finish, finish, uh, well, we haven't finished quite yet. We still have the boss of this dungeon. Um, real quickly, I was a little short on money earlier, so I need to buy another extra slip um, for this upcoming boss. Um, and here's Oki. This is that character we were supposed to meet earlier. Um, but in the speedrun, he's he's just our elevator dog. He takes us to the boss of this dungeon. It's very nice. <laughs> nice pupper. So, the final boss are Nechku and Lechku, these clockwork owls. And they have no resistance to large slits. So they're gone. That's all. 
We did it. <laughs> um, what a it's fight. very silly. Goes by very, very quickly. But with that, we've mostly finished the third arc of the game. All we have left now is the arc of Yamato. So we mentioned it a while back, but there is a boss rush at the end of this game, and that's what we're going to be heading into now. So the arc of Yamato is sort of the point of no return at the end of the game. Oh no. All right, I'll be okay. Um, I forgot to upgrade my wallet earlier, which is going to be a little bit of a problem. Oh no. There's a cool little skip. Um, but because of that, I'm short quite a bit of money. Um, I do have some backup strats, but I need to think them through real quick. I have not forgotten to upgrade my wallet in a very long time. <laughs> I believe it's this. It's just this. I think it's this. Um, so I should be okay. I'll just have to be extra careful, and if I need to, uh, in between each bosses, I can go get more slips to help me beat them. Um, I do need to be careful here. I need to make sure I'm getting enough money from them now. Um, normally, normally we have we're overflowing with money at this point. Um, I should have had about two hundred thousand, but instead I only had ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine. Um, but that's all right. That's all right. Our first boss here is Blight. Uh, there's a little manipulation we can do here, where by walking for just a little bit, uh, we sort of skip his first attack uh, that he would normally do. And from there, we can just uh, destroy, uh, he'll do this secondary attack, which is um, spinning all these swords around. Uh, I'm like, totally <laughs> missing that buddy, really didn't mess me up a little bit. I'll you be got okay. This. We'll be good, we'll be good. <laughs> um, so that spinning attack, normally to defeat Blight, you're expected to have the Veil of Mist power, and Fire Burst does not work to slow him down. Um, you do need Veil of Mist, but nicely that spinning sword attack, uh, we're able to, uh, you can just power slash it, and so we can bypass the entire need for Veil of Mist in that fight. Uh, all the other fights with bosses do require a brush power in some way, you can't just skip it all with power slash, um, but that's, that's alright. Our next boss here is Orochi, and Orochi is the, the big bad. Um, by far the hardest fight um, of this entire game. So, yeah. Uh, Orochi has two phases, and both phases have somewhat difficult strats to beat them quickly. So first thing I'm gonna do is I want to get his earth head right here to slam at me. And this actually causes a bug. So normally multiple heads are not supposed to attack you at the same time. Um, but in this case, all three of them are willing to attack me, and that's because of a very odd bug. We don't really know why it happens, but there's an odd bug that happens where just if the earth head is lying down like that, or every head is willing to attack you, essentially. Um, oh, oh no. Uh, so our goal for this first phase is to get three heads drunk. <laughs> Well, it's all right, we'll still be good here. Um, so once we get three of the heads drunk, this bell on Orochi's back will become vulnerable. Um, also want to upgrade my health. I died earlier, so I don't have any way to... Uh, I don't have any way. If, if I die here, it would be very bad. I would be placed back in Wapu Shrine. Um, that is where the last Golden Gate save happened, so... Definitely need to play this a bit safe. For the second phase, I need to, uh, each head is gonna try to launch at me like that. Or well, the first head will, the fire head. Um, but after that, by standing directly under them like this, they do a slam attack, which is much faster. And chat, if you didn't realize, those are pools of sake. So that that's why she said that, you know, we're getting drunk. <laughs> oh yes, sorry, <laughs> I forgot to say that, yes. Uh, this is, uh, this is, we are in fact getting these heads from quite <laughs> Um, it is, it is definitely silly. 
Uh, so because I'm short money, I'm actually doing a backup strat where I'm power slashing each head afterwards. Uh, normally we'd use two extra slim slips to take out these heads, but um, if I throw in a power slash with each one, it'll be enough to take them out. Uh -oh. Alright, well, took out all the heads. Um, accidentally used my small action slip there. I meant to use that for another boss, but that's alright. So that's Archie. That's by far the hardest fight of the game. Um, <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm thinking about money again. <laughs> I Seriously, I have never had a run. I've never actually gone here for getting to upgrade my wallet. I feel very silly at the moment. Uh, it's just, it's, that's never happened before. That's uh, never <laughs> happened before. Uh, we'll be okay, though. Uh, um, I'm going to... Uh, real quickly go back and buy a small action slip and then uh, go into the next fight which is Spider Queen which we already saw early in the run so this is a great time for some more donations. I've got him. I've got $25 from McDog3 who says <laughs> our pit bulls collectively known as the Pibbles have been loving all the dog sounds coming from our screen. Awoo! <laughs> <laughs> And $20 from Azzy, who says, had to donate during my favorite game, Okami. Amazing run so far. Much love to all the staff and viewers. Less than three. Alright, this next boss is... Yep, the spider? Yep, this is the spider again. Um, they they did buff Spider Queen. Uh, now it takes three vines to open her up. Um, they really they really got to make her hard. Uh, don't know what we would have done if it was only if it was, if it was only two vines. But yeah, that's that's all of Spider Queen. Um, once you open her up, all those eyes all get individually hit by the action slip, and that's just enough to take her out very quickly. By the way, if we we go to the shop one more time. We can get pet there, right? Uh, yes, we'll 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 be going back there once I defeat the main okay. boss rush before the final boss. So that will okay. be the final pet. But I want to make sure we don't miss any pets. <laughs> it is important. It is very important. I appreciate you being on top of it. Um, also, because we haven't mentioned it yet, one thing I want to say, um, chat, if you notice, it's just a cool thing. When um, she uses a brush power, there's a little red like rectangle on the side of the screen on the left side, and that's apparently her sig like uh, Ami's signature because yep. she's painting, and so she has to sign her painting. And I just thought that was really cool. <laughs> yeah, I, it was a detail I didn't even know about until more recently. Um, I just like you don't. It's not something you necessarily notice on first uh, on first glance. Uh, so this is Crimson Helm. Uh, say bye to Crimson Helm. <laughs> bye, Crimson Helm. But yeah, it's one of those like small details that even playing it casually you might not notice. So I just I want to point out like honestly, if this kind of game interests you at all, I 100% suggest going and playing it. It is gorgeous. It has great music. I mean, we're breaking it horribly, but. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that boss, by the way, was Crimson Helm. That was the boss in Gale Shrine that we that we skipped. Um, and the arc, it is very very quick to to beat up. No, no real issues there. Um, and now, for this final part, we're going to be going back into the Nine Tails fight that we did in Oni Island. So, uh, I've already explained this fight, so it's a good time for some more donations we have. Yep. We actually would like to give a shout out to one of our sponsors. Sonic the Hedgehog is no stranger to going fast. From games to movies, shows, comics, and everything in between, there's always something new speeding your way. Be sure to follow Sonic 
www.sonicthehedgehog.com to keep up to date on everything the Blue Blur is doing and keep breaking those world records. I had a little bit of an issue there. Uh, she jumped in a way I wasn't expecting so that uh, she dodged my cherry bomb. It's rather rude. She didn't just walk forward into it. <laughs> um, so normally on this final phase, I would just use two more Exum slips to take them, uh, to take it out. But because I am out of them entirely, uh, instead I am going to be just winning with cherry bombs. Um, hopefully, so should just be three cherry bombs to take her out. Uh oh, what are you doing? she's very fast in this phase. Without Exum slips, it's actually very difficult. Oop, that is. That's my name. It definitely shows uh, how good of a speedrunner you are, though, that you can do backups. <laughs> I, I have played a lot of I've played a lot of this. Um, <laughs> there are quite a there's a lot of categories, and specifically, there is uh, the category all brushes. Um, you are very limited on money, and so there's a lot of extra strategies we do in that to uh, defeat more defeat more uh, more enemies. Uh, without just using extra slips everywhere. All right. So as uh, as uh, Anada alluded, alluded to earlier, uh, I will be doing one last visit to the shop. Um, this visit, I have over the course of these fights obtained four hundred thousand yen, and I will be spending all of it uh, <laughs> on forty large extra slips. So. Yeah. <laughs> and then doing the most important thing in the whole world. The run. most important thing. Oh, that was the most important thing. thing. The final pet of the game. Yes! Thank you, Marco. Oh. <laughs> All right. And from here, we're heading into the, the final boss. Uh, Marco says his final goodbyes. Um, all the Celestials in here are sort of ghosts. They're not really here. But, um, get to get to finally say goodbye and finally enter the final boss fight against Yami, Emperor of Darkness. And our first thing is to use the next slip. And another one. And another one. <laughs> and that will be the theme of this fight. So this fight is actually very cool casual. Um, if, if, any, if anyone has seen this and is like, I want to play this game, do not use Exum slips in this fight. I'm just, I'm just saying it right now. <laughs> this fight is super cool. Uh, basically, Yami at the beginning of this fight takes away all of your brush powers. And uh, after each phase of Yami will give us back three of her brush powers. And so right there, we just got packed Power Slash. And so that lets us Power Slash Yami for some more damage. And then we also got Bloom there, which we could have used, but you can also just use Power Slash to immediately move on. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so the second phase here is the green phase. Um, I am going to be doing some extra attacks here to try to skip using an Exum Slip, which is very important. I'm actually short one Exum Slip than I would normally have. Uh, I do have a backup for that, so I'll be fine, but I do need to get these hits in as well. One. <laughs> one single hit. Um, so yeah, normally this fight, Yami has all sorts of cool attacks, um, all sorts of stuff. That is just very, very, uh, it's, it's such a cool fight. I love this fight. So just getting in some more hits, and now that's gonna, that saves us one extra slip, just a little bit of optimization. Um, this fight is just in general. There's not a whole lot you can do to speed this up um, with how we're doing damage. It does end up feeling a little bit like an auto-scroller. 
Um, this third phase is the gambling phase. Um, don't gamble, kids. But uh, <laughs> we're going to immediately use uh, five action slips. And then one thing is we could use a sixth, but it actually wouldn't do anything. Um, because phases cannot move on until you've gotten all your powers back. So for all these phases, we're using action slips in such in a way where we'll be able to only, we'll only need one more hit to take out the phase, um, but we're not taking it down to the lowest health immediately. Um, so on each of these, I'm power slashing, and uh, by doing, by dealing a bunch of damage right at the start, uh, this fight is a little rigged where at a certain point of damage, you will always get back the power. So by just going all the way to near the bottom to being at very low health, you will just always get back all three powers. And just a silly thing, you even get the powers back that you didn't actually get in the game. Yes, I do. So <laughs> I, I don't even know if there's a way to use it in this fight, uh, but I do have like lily pad, and I do I will get catwalk back. So uh, any powers that I skip, veil of mist, I'll get stuff like that. Um, it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty neat. Really. Um, <laughs> to you know you still you still get all the powers by the end. This fourth phase, uh, that third phase was, you know, sort of gambling themed. Uh, this fourth phase, uh, we won't get to see it because I beat Yami up too fast, but uh, the theme of this phase is Sick Max. Um, we'll see it in the cutscene after <laughs> I beat this phase. Um, we are nearing the end of the run, and uh, this is just a chance I want to shout out the entire Okami community, a bunch of really cool people. If you want to speed run this game, uh, there's a link to our Discord on the speedrun.com page for it. But yeah, this game is really, it's super fun. I would, I highly recommend playing it. It's super, it's super fun. Um, basically, I do want to shout out uh, Krino, really good friend, supporting me a lot in this. Um, but with that, we are moving on to the final phase of Yami. So right here, we get all our powers back. Um, and we can finally fight the final phase. We get back Sunrise, and now we will use not 12. Normally we would use 12, but I'm actually short in extra slips, so I'm going to use 11 extra slips. Um, and then I'll use a, I'll, I'll take out a final little bit of health another way. Where is it? There we go. And that's, uh, time is coming up right here after, once the results screen pop up with the money, that is, uh, that's the game. Time. Oh. Yep. Um, so yeah, we do time this by in-game time, so my in-game time is a 2.02.19, only slightly different, but I think that's all, uh, there is for this run. Thank you so much for watching, keep donating. Um, anything you want to say, Anade? Uh, no, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to, I have to get this game now and play it both, <laughs> both casually and speedrun. So mm -hmm. pet the dogs and keep donating money. Yes. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you, Lego, for that wonderful run of such a beautiful game. Before we head on to an ad break, I just want to list out a few people who have donated $25 in that last run. We've got Steven, no comment. MVH, also no comment. Several anonymous donors, $25, no comments. Maybe they're all the same. I'm not sure. And TWD Industries, final $25 donation, no comment. But it is time now for an ad break, but do not panic, because we will be right back with more Frost Fatales.
Welcome back, everyone. I first want to let you know about our sponsor, the Yeti. Wait, yes, the Yeti, excuse me. The Yeti is one of our official sponsors for Frost Fatales 2023. They create amazing merch, apparel, and vinyl for video games and pop culture. And for this event, a portion of the purchase price for all items in the Frost Fatales collection will be donated directly to Malala Fund. You can find out more at theyeti.com. And just a reminder of why we are here today. We are here raising money for Malala Fund. Malala Fund is working for a world where every girl can learn and lead. They believe, lo they believe local educators and activists are best suited to address the problems girls face in their communities. Malala Fund invests in their work and collective power to create change, hold leaders accountable, and give girls the tools they need to advocate for themselves. From supporting STEM education for young women in Pakistan to creating safe learning spaces for girls in northern Nigeria, your gift today is an investment in Malala Fund programs that directly benefit girls. We've got a $25 donation from Silvermoon9000 referencing some prizes from earlier. Those are some amazing looking Umbreon and Esprion Perlers, less than three. And I just want to remind everyone that we do have an amazing group of prizes available today. We've got, let's see, we've got Espeon and Umbreon Perlers, as mentioned previously. That is a $15 minimum donation. A shiny furret plushie donated by Just Little Dudes. That is a minimum donation of $20. That could be yours. It is very, very cute. It's a shiny furret, so it is pink. Amazing. We also have the cross code on Switch. That is a minimum $5 donation that could potentially become yours. And speaking of cross code, we do have an incentive for the cross code run later on. It is a $3,000 goal. We currently have $1,375. And if you're not sure exactly what the level 99 bonus run is. Here's what's going on. You know, when you're playing video games, and you're like, wow, I just wish that I was super overpowered right now so I could just blow through this game super duper quick. Well, if we get this incentive, Matt, Epic Yoshi Master will actually redo the game, but at level 99. So... It's just, it. I, I desperately want to see this, and we are just about halfway there. We are, again, $1,375 out of $3,000. And we also have some bit wars that have opened up. Later on, for Pokemon Coliseum, the Espeon nickname, actually, in the lead right now, is Okami at $25. And it's tied with Squeeps also $25. So if you want Okami to win, I kind of want Okami to win. If you want Okami to win, please get your donations in before that. And that is, of course, later today. So you do still have a little bit of time. Now sit tight, relax, make sure you are hydrated, and we are going to go into a new ad break. Oh, 
Welcome back, everyone. I hope you got your water, your snacks, your comfy socks. Because we are just setting up for Golf It, a race. Classic first five maps, 100% between Nicole Goodnight and Bath and Jan. But before that's super duper ready to go, I have another few donations I would like to share with you. We've got a $100 donation from Sam. Lesson three. We've got a $25 donation from Corrosive Frost. Malala Fund, less than three. And $25 from the Comfy Panda. So many adorable prizes, and the money goes to a great cause in Malala Fund. So, of course, I had to donate. And remember, those prizes include those Espeon and Umbreon Perlers, some cute, cute, cute little Celeste strawberries. Oh, my goodness. I, I want these but you could have them for a minimum $10 donation. We also have, I want to tell you, we also have the grand prize, cumulative over the event, a PlayStation 5 and a Nintendo Switch and games. So please get your donations in. You could win all the stuff available today and cumulatively, if you donate $125 by the end of the event, you can also win that grand prize. And I want to give just a little shout out to Frame Fatales, the community. Frost Fatales is presented by Frame Fatales, an all-women community for those who are interested in speedrunning, charity events, and gaming. If you would like to support Frame Fatales, you can follow us on Twitter at Frame Fatales, and tell people about this event. To learn more, type exclamation mark FF in chat. I also want to give another shout out to the Japanese Restream. We'd like to thank the Japanese Restream for providing an al alternate language broadcast of Frost Fatales 2023. Japanese Restream is a community where people can enjoy various speedrun events held abroad in Japanese. They are broadcasting the event at twitch.tv slash Japanese underscore Restream on a delay. You can check out the schedule by doing exclamation mark Restream in the chat. We would love for viewers to join their stream and support the event. And I know this is the event you have all been waiting for. It is Golf It. The classic first five maps, 100% race between Nicole Goodnight and Bath and Jan. Mm -hmm. 